folks so it's been a bit slow going obviously you saw us taking the piece off on the doorstep and we've taken a strip off along the yellow wall the old yellow wall there but we had to really break it off we had the idea that hopefully we were going to try and remove this tongue and groove piece by piece but we've discovered that that tongue and groove has been glued together so we've come down to the idea of trying to saw off the flooring in panels because we've realized that we can use this in our bathroom. We need a bathroom floor. That's that's something that we were planning on doing anyway. Um, there's quite a few big gaps in there that we lose things in at the moment. So why not use this one for up there? So we're cutting panels to um, a certain size based on the size of the bathroom uh, for when we do relay the floor in there. And they're gonna hopefully uh, be able to fit together as kind of, yeah complete panels in there. We're allowing for some mess as we cut these because um, even though we'll be sawing through, we might not get straight lines and things. So we've kind of allowed about 10 centimeters at either end uh, for the dimensions that we decided for the panels. Yeah, we're just working this out as we go. So we'll see. Right, so this is the stage we've got to so far. Very pleased to see we have some beautiful big flagstones. Um, it's been a bit difficult, as we were saying a minute ago, our dream, our hopes had been to be able to either prise the tongue and groove apart and take them up board, board, board. Uh, and then we discovered that they've been very securely glued together. So we thought we'd try and cut out panels uh, the size of potentially what we need to refloor our bathroom upstairs and it's kind of worked we do have some panels but unfortunately a few snapped as we were trying to get the last bit kind of prized up whilst sawing it it's very difficult we don't really have the best of tools for this kind of job um, most of very long blades and we just didn't want to keep on hitting the stone underneath so as we're trying to prize up the boards to be able to cut of course it cracks here and there as I said these boards have had quite a lot of wear and tear over the last decade or more so there's already cracks and um, places where we've had to screw things down and spilled water and puppies weeing and everything <laughs> so we've done our best to try and preserve the wood but um yeah as you can see rosa just sweeping up we're really pleased some lovely big flagstones but it's in really lovely condition beautiful stone very happy. Yeah. We're going to sweep this up, move the table over, and then I think go and do our evening chores and carry on with this tomorrow. We're not quite sure how to proceed with the rest of the room, mm, okay. but we've got to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> we can't stop. No. <laughs> Put it all back. Yeah. morning so it's the next day and we've got thus far half the room is ha well has had its floor stripped it's a lovely sunny day James is gonna just start on this part of the room behind me here which we weren't actually planning on <laughs> doing anything to hello, hello workman morning. <laughs> he's just having his tea break um, so we weren't actually planning on doing this um, the the uh, Wood panelling wasn't something that we were desperate to remove, but because we've removed this bit 
um, where the kitchen's gonna go. We're gonna remove it from this side as well. Jane's already last night took off the skirting boards. So we've seen that the yellow does in fact go down um, behind this, the blue panels on the other side of the room. And also, to be honest, when we take up uh, the wooden floor, which we will be for the rest of the room, not just leaving it uh, half done, um, it's gonna actually leave a gap under the blue paneling because the blue paneling was put on at the same time as the wooden floor. So yes, yeah, so the, the first step is gonna be taking off this blue paneling and then we'll be taking up the rest of the floor. Supervising. <laughs> Pregnant lady supervisor, that's fair enough. It's a very important job. So that old wood panelling has been coming off very easy, revealing the even older wood panelling. Just an update on why we're actually removing this panelling. We had to remove the wood, the blue panelling from over on the other side where the kitchen counters are going to be going and we're having to get water pipes and things and realised that we're going to have to do the same to this side and we've always been a bit more of a fan of the up and down, straight up and down panelling rather than the, the angular panelling. It's sort of 1990s style, um, or a little bit more 1950s, 60s, 70s perhaps. I'm not sure really what the age of this is. But yeah, as I've been pulling it back, it, it's revealed that it stops just short of the end of the wall. And obviously behind here, I've got a hole up here as well. So when I remove this, we're going to see that behind here, behind here there is um, a cavity, which is what we've got on the other side. I guess this is, would have been potentially a bookcase or a cupboard. Um, so a neighbor of ours who has a very similar house up on the hill said these cavities were, is where you hang your pig. So who knows what this would have been used for. Anyway, I've just got to get this plug out the way and then get the rest of this down. Right, so obviously while we've been working away in the house, working on uh, our kitchen makeover, Owen has been carrying on on the build of the woodshed around the corner. Check this out guys. Oh, I haven't seen this for a few days. There's been a bit of a delay since the last vlog. Obviously the last time we were having a look, there were just a few upright poles. <laughs> yeah. Now we've pretty much got a completely framed up building. Check out the size of these. Posts in the ground. Owen spent hours making these half lap joints. This is farm style timber framing. Make do with what you have, make do and mend. Owen has had to work with on-site materials being this quite old uh, timber, mostly Scots pine, Sitka spruce. Um, he's had to work with 
bits of wood that we had lying around from the polytunnel build. We've bought a little bit of timber in, but not much. So it's been quite a challenge having to get this together. But as a woodshed, this is amazing. It's big. It's huge. It's going to last for ages. Yeah. We're not going to live in it. We might. Maybe. Our house is pulling apart currently. Yeah, so. we've got some plumbing issues in the house. <laughs> Plumber's in right now, fixing a leaking hot tank. Anyway, back to the build. So, right now we're at a very exciting point because we're going to be raising the roof. That went really smoothly. We're so pleased. This is looking fantastic. Uh, it is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> we realised we have like an attic space. I know. Oh, Loads of uses. Is it level? We're level. <laughs> folks we're into the evening now uh, I think Owen has called it a day on the build of our woodshed you can see this fantastic roof now really helps us see what it's going to be like that's really great progress on that I'm just heading down to our blacksmith building to get a bale of hay and do my evening chores gonna take some hay up to the sheep um, maybe a little bit to the goats. I've just come into the buyer um, to do evening chores, bring the goats some tree hay, break up the last of the tree hay from yesterday. Nice dry twigs that we use for kindling now, so that's quite a nice little cycle. Yeah, I thought that we would show you this uh, lantern that we got. We actually got sent this for um, free to try out by a company called Olight. It's just been really brilliant, so we wanted to just mention that. There is a link 
uh, in the description box below with a discount code if you would like to buy one. But we wanted to try it out for a while and actually see how it was. It's a rechargeable, incredibly bright uh, LED lantern. And I've often been working in the dark at this time of year for the evening chores. So it has made a huge difference. So if any of you happen to be looking for a light for some of your animal buildings or for any of the work you might do outside, James uses it sometimes for chopping wood in the woodshed. Um, yeah, we really recommend these guys. This is actually the mini lantern. As you can see, very bright and very small. I think the goats kind of enjoy it too, to be able to see their food, their tree hay in the evening. I find that the charge at the moment lasts, yeah, for like a couple of weeks. Um, just using it in the evening for about half an hour while I'm in here and I'm doing the hay and things each time. That's me, cracked up some kindling from yesterday's tree hay, um, giving the goats some fresh grass and uh, tree hay for today and some fresh water and I'm just gonna leave the fire now and turn off the light <laughs> um, and head in for the evening. Chores done in the dark. Um, we're going to go in and see if we can get the last bit of our floor up to reveal the flagstones even more. Um, Owen's got a tool he thinks will be perfect for the job. So we're going to rip the floors up and see if we can expose the rest of that beautiful flagstone floor. Alright folks, hope you've enjoyed this one. We'll catch you next time. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>